Okay, today we are going to talk about terminals and more specifically about the HP terminals and the series uh, that is called as 264X and this one is a 2645 Yeah, you see the beautiful logo 2645 that the third in the series and you can tell I like them a lot because I have a whole bunch of the other versions out here. Uh, started with the 2640 in 1974 powered by an 8008, 8008 Intel processor. Uh, then very quickly after that they introduced the 44 which had the two tape drives uh, which I repaired in an other video that's why we can use this one today and then finally uh, the 2645 which is this one as an 8080 processor so much uh, better and faster processor uh, they went on to do the graphics one 2648 the ones I have are full of screen molds so we'll have to repair that in another video Suddenly flickering a bit. So the screen rods are all those little dots all around. I don't know if you can see them. And ended up with a splash with the 2647. And I actually have a 47 new in box from HP factory. Uh, and we'll have to unbox it. Uh, when we get to that uh, kind of intelligent terminal. This one is really a, a, a microcomputer on its own. It runs basic and it can run apps on it. So that will be the finishing touch. But for now, let's go back to our 2645. You immediately notice, like all, all the other 264X terminals, the very wide aspect ratio, uh, which makes it so special. And the idea was to have a full 80 characters by 24, 25 lines, I think 24. And why 80 characters? Because of course you have those laying around in 1974 and those are the punch cards and they have 80 characters per card. Now still with us today in a Windows machine, you pop the command window, it comes 80 by something. Uh, and of course, HP was so perfectionist, they didn't want to squish the character, so they made that special tube uh, which gives this machine uh, so much personality. In order to open it up, you uh, need a special tool, uh, or a screwdriver, but a special tool is better. So there is a special little slot on the side where you introduce your special tool. And one on either side, I already unlocked the other side. So we'll do this one. Oop. Uh, perfect with the magic key. And woo -hoo, you have the beautiful clamshell design. And so it's super modular. It has a lot of cards, but it always starts with the keyboard and card attached at the back. And then there is the serial card. I have one here with always a million options. This one uses a Western Digital uh, TR-1602 and but all the rest is just uh, so some TTL stuff and the uh, the cable plugs it goes like this and the cables comes out the back I'll show you in a minute. The three next cards are the graphics then there is the processor block and then the tape ones which are actually I think out of the picture here that's the processor card and yeah, here we go. We have our, let's see if I can zoom on it. It's what it's supposed to be, an Intel 8080. Actually most of the cards I have have AMD chips, but this one has an original Intel. And this thing is well engineered everywhere. It's built like a tank, so on the back you have this little door and the, the back of the cars protrude and that's where you would do your connection or your expansion. So this is the uh, typical HP plug for the keyboard. And they are all keyed, right? There's a notch at the different height. So the, the uh, serial line comes in here. So let's see 
if she chooses, as Eve would say. There you go. It's a CRT, so it takes a little bit of time to come through. And it comes with the terminal ready. I know you can already tell those are beautifully formed characters, and we'll talk about character generation in a second. To figure out what terminal you have, the first thing you do is push on this beautiful keyboard, so same thing, keyboard built like a tank, and they are uh, inductive pickup keys, because they didn't want them to fail with contact, right? Uh, and there is a test button, and it goes blank for a while, and two, there you go, and then it does self-test, and immediately you can probably notice how fine the characters are, they don't have the typical jagged characteristics that you expect from a terminal of that era and there is a reason for that and the, the smoothness of the character it has to do with how the characters are generated on this machine and it's quite interesting the basic matrix is a 9 by uh, 15 and then you can address every point and turn them on or off, but that's usually not how the character sets are implemented. Instead, uh, they take advantage of the fact that characters don't touch each other, so you need one column free at the beginning and at the end, and one row free on the top and the bottom. So you actually only need seven bits to define a character. So what they do is that they use 7 bit for turning on the dots and the extra bit they use it for a uh, resolution improving trick uh, it's probably better explained on the next page where the uh, first bit is not displayed but is used to displace the row of dots by half a dot they call it a half shift so it allows you to uh, draw on the inter interstitial dots of the ma matrix and basically it's a one bit way of achieving double the resolution and they have a good example over here uh, on the uh, at character where you see how they have half shifted this one and then this one is not half shifted this one's half shifted again and that allows them to do a very smooth character which you wouldn't have achieved without that uh, trick and they even give you, if you want to make your own sets, they even give you a worksheet here with the half-shifted one. And the non-shifted one, they call them micro-vectors, and they are used only for geometric sets, uh, like this one, the line set, uh, which I don't have on this terminal for now. And uh, there's uh, some other ones. Uh, so this is, this is all the character sets that exist on this machine. So all I have right now is those two, the Roman upper and lower case. Uh, but there is a line drawing, a mass character set, a large character set. All of these I think have located the source for the ROMs. And there's a whole bunch that actually I don't have. Uh, so if any of you has it, you know, I'd love to get the Katakana or Swedish finish. Norwegian, Danish, and APL. Uh, it's a 128 character set. They have upper and lower case. Cyrillic and Arabic. So if you guys have the source for those ROMs, I would like to know where they are and, and copy them. So this is a dream terminal for hackers because there are so many optional cards you can add. Uh, memory, for example. Uh, I already showed you that one, but I have already a memory card in that one added. And the one I really want to try is to spice up my terminal with this board, which is called the Display Enhancement, if it can focus. And that's the one that has the empty slots for more uh, ROMs, uh, for character ROMs. Uh, so basically there are actually three types of ROMs and two types of characters. The simplest to understand is what they call the micro vector, uh, which uses the uh, full, you know, the base matrix here, which is 15 rows and 9 columns. 
and uh, the nine columns is where of course the, the nine bit ROM comes from uh, because uh, that's what this thing is actually this is a line character so it has this character in it and this is a pig with five legs it's it's a ROM mask ROM with nine bits no so so HP would just when they needed a special they would just have somebody make it so I want to add uh, some new character sets uh, using this this board but it gets really quickly complicated I already have one set uh, which is the line set and this is a 9-bit mask ROM which would be quite difficult to reproduce I don't know of a 9-bit prom and plus this is uh, bipolar this is fast prom so this is very very unique but Call as later revision of the board where they use 8 bit mask proms and there is some added electronics. There is one more row compared to here that generates the 9th bit. So the thinking is that we can dump those 8 bit ROMs and then figure out what trick this electronics was doing. Now to make things even more complicated on the have a later terminal uh, where they have upgraded the display board and now they have everything in one ROM so that is a 64k ROM this is are just 8k ROMs uh, and I suspect all 8 bits too uh, so we're going to dump everything we have actually the uh, 8 bit mask ROMs the, this 9 bit mask ROM original and then the uh, the later all characters ROM And the beauty of this data I.O. is that it knows all those uh, totally obsolete bipolar prompts. So it's the uh, 76641 from Harris, which would be the equivalent prompt to the mask ROM that I'm trying to dump. Okay, load RAM from master. Okay, insert master device, it's inserted. Okay. All right, and then we read the 8K of it, so that's good. A recognized device and create file from RAM. And this one is the 57. What did he say? It's 1818 1597. 1597. Right. Okay. I need to receive all the 8K. All right, so it's good. So one more dumped. Uh, so we dumped everything, uh, including the uh, nine bit side. We just had to use a, a kludge to get the ninth bit. So we got in two passes uh, and bent some pins. Okay, so we have all our original mask set. Okay, so we dumped all the ROMs successfully, and we wrote a little program to display them on a modern computer. Um, and so here is the 9-bit micro vector line that comes from my board and it appears just as it should. Uh, this is the math uh, set, so that's an 8-bit character set with the half shifts and it has the integral sign in three, three parts, top, middle, bottom and then all the characters you need for math equations. Um, oh, and that's uh, actually how we figure the 8-bit macro vector versus 9-bit macro vector. That's the 8-bit macro vector as it comes out of the ROM. And as you can tell or cannot tell, it's missing, of course, the 9th bit. The left column is always off. Then, but when you compare to the 9th bit or the 9-bit ROMs, all they did is shift it one to the left. So in order to resurrect the ninth bit, all you got to do is shift it one to the right, and then you extend the uh, first bit and copy it. Oops. Uh, it turns out that in uh, all the character sets that, that HP had released, the first two bits were the same. So that's how they could collapse the 9th bit into an 8th bit. So we have that figured out. 
and then uh, that's the uh, that's actually the eight bit uh, large character set. You assemble large characters out of bits and pieces, and then this is now displayed correctly. You have shifted one to the right and extended the first bit. And that's the standard character set that was on the uh, original character gen board. So that comes with all devices. And that's a 128 character set. It has the uh, small letters and the cap letters and to the whole ASCII 128. And actually, while I was at it making a vintage software on modern computers to support my character sets, uh, I extended it so that I could actually um, edit characters on top of just displaying them. So it's called HP 26 Forex Font Editor, and I'm just opening a, a, a ROM file. So written in Python, so it takes a while. There we go. There you go. So that is uh, the uppercase part of the standard character set and that's how I just showed it to you. But here I can also edit all the pixels. So this is in 8-bit ROM with one bit that's hidden to do the half shift. And in this mode, in the edit view, you can actually see the hidden bits in green here. So let's, let's go for example on one character and you can really see how the, uh, the this half bit shift tremendously improves character generation. So take a look at the ampersand sign here. One every two lines is half shifted, so that's bit one that's hidden when you display it. But here you go. I'll just transform them with non half shifted. So if you didn't have half shifted, you would be you know, hard pressed to make a smooth character. Uh, did I do it right again? Yeah. You, you'd be stuck to the square matrix here and with the half shifts you can do them much better uh, and uh, for the, the characters that are very curvy uh, it makes a huge difference so like the uh, ampersand, the pound and the uh, at sign the A for example so the characters are much, much better formed with that half shift, the Y uses it. Uh, so that's a momentous trick that they use here uh, to double the resolution with just one bit. Okay, so we are going to try to uh, add some character sets to my uh, display enhancements board. So we dumped that one, uh, which is a 9-bit uh, line set. And I'm going to try to do the 8-bit sets on this board using this bipolar ROMs, which are actually they are from Harris. Never, never heard about that chip. So, uh, but turns out here's bipolar which no burner would do today mine does I go to select device here's and, ah, and it's a 7681 7681 and 8K bipolar prom. So this one you can only program once. So if we screw up, we're dead. Chip. Okay. Bloom loaded to the darn thing. Yes. Alright. And then program process devices. You good with that? Yes. If we mess up, yes. the ship's gone. Start. It's progressing. Well, okay, and it passed, which means it read it back. It so did the checks on. Yeah, it did a check and everything. Okay. Uh, well, we shouldn't lose a minute, should we? We're going to. Well, remember, you got the mod yet? Oh yes. So it's not that easy because this is an 
Uh, these are mass chromes and when they are 8-bit sets they use an O-ring scheme for the select and this is a programmable ROM which uses an AND scheme but it's still 8-bit so it's the lesser of the modification so 6 to 6 pin I have to bend out so that's a select pin which is grounded in the scheme and then we want ungrounded so we'll just solder a resistor okay and then I'll make my little chip select mod there we go I wonder how many people have burnt a prom put it in and said why isn't it working I think nobody we're just the only <laughs> crazy to do this at the time you just purchase the darn ROM right then. okay so here's my ROM enable hack hopefully uh, we, 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 we think that's what we need to do to make sure this is enabled so I want to move it two over two over one two so that is the memory board. Front, and then you have to not screw it up. There's a front and a back. Power's on. Pa. Ah. No smoke, that's good. Oops. Nope, it doesn't like it. It doesn't like it. Okay. Meep. Power. Ah! BP, BP. Oh, two beeps. That's no good. They should have only one beep. Okay. Well, that's 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 beautiful. Oh, it's Matrix. <laughs> Look at that. You should come and see it. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, it's on Matrix. <laughs> it's oh, it. it but the lines need to drip down. Uh, it was. It was for a second. Okay. <laughs> okay. Matrix reloaded. So, upon further review of the HP rules and regulations. And apparently the controller cannot be one more than one slot away from the DMA. Right. Contact. Oh, that's better. I think that's going to work. There you go, terminal ready. That was the empty slot. And ta-da! We made it! You oh, it. we... Well, wait. We added... Oh yeah, well, because there are two character sets. Right. There's, the or, there's the line set, which right. is the 9-bit, which mm -hmm. we dumped. And the, here is the... Uh, Our correctly working 8-bit. Correctly working uh, on the fresh the bipolar ROM here. And it's... Okay, then we should make a demo with that. So this allows you to do all kind of weird tables, uh, actually all kind of nice tables. And this is uh, for you can make mathematical equations. Oh, and or, I, or write in Greek. I got I got my uh, my new uh, enhancements here. So before I only had inverse video, but now I can blink it, and I can make it half bright. So uh, we have improved our terminal. Excellent. Uh, you want to try the large character set and yes. do the that's, that's the nine bit. <laughs> yep. Well, I, that's, I was hey, a hack that works. Oh, well, wait, 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 wait. But for the nine bit, I need the space for the hack. We've got to figure uh, out right, right, right. way of doing it. 